and therefore you got to live your life in his presence you've got to live your life knowing that your reward is coming from on high and therefore I must live a life that brings glory to God even when I'm going through tough times welcome to enduring truth the teaching ministry of pastor Paul Shepherd have you ever been frustrated because it seemed like God's plans for your life were on hold Today on Enduring Truth, we'll discover that following the Lord means hanging in there when the going gets tough. We're about to be blessed by When Destiny Seems Delayed. It's another wonderful teaching based on the life of David, taken from the Old Testament book of 1 Samuel chapter 18. And now, here's Pastor Paul. David now enters into a period of time where he is a fugitive from the very king he is supposed to succeed on the throne. For years, David is on the run. For years, David is dodging and hiding, moving from place to place, trying to find refuge, trying to escape the wrath of a king who is hating him for no good reason. David enters into a period, a season in his life where he's doing all the right things, but seemingly getting all the wrong results. My question is, can anybody relate? I want to talk to folk who know what it feels like to be doing the right things, but seemingly getting the wrong results. I want to talk to some folk who know what it feels like to have served God and to be doing his will and doing all you know to live according to the plan of God for your life. And God has spoken some wonderful things, given you some exceeding great precious promises in the word, and you're just trying to live the abundant life that Jesus promised you, but yet you see hell breaking out all around in your life. I want to talk to folk who say, what in the world is going on here? Why am I in the twilight zone? Why am I living a life that seems right now to make no sense? That's where David was. He enters into a period, I'm not talking about days, weeks, oh, he had a few bad weeks. No, no, I'm talking about a period of years where this man is running from an enemy who oughtn't be an enemy. And David is trying to make sense of how it is that God has promised me a throne, but right now I am experiencing nothing but trouble and trial in my life. I want to talk to some folk who can relate. This isn't for all of you who are leaping from mountaintop to mountaintop. This message isn't for folk who don't know anything about challenge. This message isn't for folk who say, all you got to do is live right and everything just going to come together. It's all just wonderful. And just, as soon as you live right, God just smiles on you and he just makes everything just fine. Thanks for sharing. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to some folk who say, I'm believing God for the mountaintop, but right now I'm finding myself walking through a valley of the shadow of death. And I love all my mountaintop friends. I love it when God takes me there too. But I happen to know that he won't let you leap from one to the other all the time. So don't be surprised if you happen to find yourself in a valley every now and then. Because I'm here to tell you that sometimes the path of God for your life is going to lead you through some difficult places. And that's where David is. He is smack in the middle of the will of God. David has done nothing wrong. David has not missed God's plan for his life. He's not walking in blatant disobedience to the word. David is doing all he was doing is loving God, serving the king, taking care of his business. And just because the blessing of the Lord was on his life, Saul is after him seeking to kill him. This message is for folk who are saying, Lord, what in the world's going on? I know you promised me some things, but I'm wanting to know when the promise is going to be fulfilled. Listen, let me help you learn from this section of David's life a very significant principle, which is that there is often a difference between the promise being spoken and the promise being fulfilled. There is a time element. There is a time gap between the spoken promise and the fulfilled promise. You're going to learn that sometimes God will tell you what he's going to do in your life, 
but you don't know when he's going to do it. And the other thing is you don't know what you're going to have to go through before he does it. See, Joseph got a dream when he was 17, and the dream looked good because his family was bowing down to him in the dreams. But what he didn't know was when the dream would be fulfilled, it was going to take place 22 years later, and he sure didn't know what he was going to go through between the dreams and the fulfillment. And you know why God doesn't tell us everything up front? Because if he were to tell you, now when I'm through with you, I'm going to have you in a wonderful place. You're going to be blessed coming and going. Your enemies are going to all be at your foot and everything's going to be wonderful. You say, oh, praise God. And then God will say, now let me show you what you're going to go through. That would take the praise right out your mouth. Some of us will start asking for a plan B. Well, now, Lord, if I'm going to have to go through that, do you have another plan that we might sign off on? So God doesn't tell you everything. That's why you got to learn to walk by faith and not by sight. What do you do when destiny seems delayed? What do you do when you know God's taking you somewhere, but you don't have the timeline yet? What do you do when you're living in that gap? What do you do when you're living in that tension between promise and fulfillment? I'm glad you asked. I got three points I want to share with you. Three lessons I want to draw from this long period of David's life. Now, basically, this period lasts the rest of the book of 1 Samuel. From the end of chapter 18, where we're told Saul is his enemy for the rest of his life, it then moves into chapter 19 and 20 and 21, 2, 3, 4, 5, right up to 1 Samuel 31. And during that whole period of time, David is a fugitive. I want to tell you there are some lessons we can draw from his life during that period for our own lives while we're waiting on God to bring his promises to pass in our lives. Just three simple lessons I want to share and I'll let you go. Number one, David maintained his consciousness of God's presence. He maintained his consciousness of God's presence. While David was going through this trying period of time, he understood that he lived his life in the presence of God. David understood that everywhere he went, everything he did, he did it in the presence of God. And all of his behavior was based on his awareness that no matter where I am, whether I'm hiding in a cave, whether I'm hiding in some town, wherever I am, whatever I'm doing, God is with me and God is watching me. I want to encourage somebody who is living in the tension between promise and fulfillment, who's wondering why I'm going through a little twilight zone period in my life. I want to tell you that you must, during that period of time, maintain your consciousness of God's presence. You must understand that God is watching you. Some of us are self Conscious. We live our lives self-consciously. Others live our lives people-consciously. But I'm here to tell you, you got to learn to live your life God-consciously. Because when it's all said and done, your destiny is not in the hands of your own efforts. And your destiny is not in the hands of other people. But your destiny is in the hands of Almighty God. And therefore, you got to live your life in his presence you've got to live your life knowing that your reward is coming from on high and therefore i must live a life that brings glory to god even when i'm going through tough times david tells us he teaches us and he shows us by his example that you've got to live a god conscious life that's exactly why david treated saul right even when saul was treating him wrong now, when you read what goes on in all those chapters remaining in 1 Samuel, you will see that Saul hunted David like you hunt down an animal on a hunting trip. I mean, when he would hear David was in a certain town, he and his army would head right over there. And David would escape and go somewhere else, and Saul would wait to hear where he is, and then they'd head over there. And I mean, he is just being literally hunted down. But the Bible says 